Lake Street. All set? Hey everyone, welcome to the Mary Sue Live. Today we are going to decode the sexism in the Brad Pitt Angelina divorce. And here to talk about it, I'm Keisha. And joining me is. I'm Charlene Zhao. And. I'm Lindsay Ellison. Um, earlier today on our site, Mediaite, which is a sister site with the Mary Sue that covers the intersection of politics and the media, we actually had an article published by our own Dana Eisenberg, who isn't here today, and she was talking about the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie divorce. Earlier today, TMZ, who always get to the gossip before anybody else, reported that after a conflict over how to parent their children, they have decided to split up. More specifically, Angelina Jolie filed for divorce after two years of marriage and 12 years of partnership with Brad Pitt, citing irreconcilable differences, saying she doesn't want any money from him, and that he can have um, visitation, and they're going to share legal custody. Then, she came out, said that she would like some privacy, he came out and said that he would like some privacy, and there's only one person left that isn't getting any privacy, and it just so happens to be the person who has the very least to do with the divorce, and that's Jennifer Aniston. Right. Jennifer Aniston, let's see, let's talk about her, because she and Brad Pitt have been divorced since 2004, right? Yeah. 2005, 2004 in that area. Yes, but still, after all of these years, her name is constantly thrown into the conversation of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, and if we recall, it wasn't she's never really said anything mm -mm. negative about either of the two. The only things that she's ever said is positive stuff. She actually told The Hollywood Reporter that she doesn't speak daily with Brad Pitt, but we wish nothing but wonderful things for each other just last year. So if they wish nothing but wonderful things, why is it that every single time something happens with Brad and Angie in the news, Jennifer's name is hauled into it? It's, it's like a strong fixation because there's been so many articles written written already because, you know, dinner is just so fast about all the Twitter reactions that we're seeing and people are putting constant Jennifer Aniston memes to comment, celebrate, joke about the divorce and they're all like friends memes, obviously. But I think the idea is that we as women are oftentimes taught to aspire for marriage and for Jennifer Aniston and for a lot of women, marrying Brad Pitt is like the peak achievement. And because we live in a patriarchy, nothing Jennifer Aniston can do professionally, personally, is ever going to trump marrying Brad Pitt. So that's why we keep talking about it. And I think what's especially annoying to the people who write the gossip columns or the people who create these tweets that pretend that she's somewhere out there today celebrating the fact that her ex is now going through a divorce, which has to be extremely painful and would make her a weirdly vindictive person. Um, the people who write these things, they might be a little bit angry about the fact that she came back from that divorce and went on to have a great amount of commercial success. She still had endorsement deals. She still got roles. She was in a number of healthy relationships and now she's married. She's happy. She doesn't care that she was broken up with for another woman. And the problem there, like you were mentioning earlier, is when all of this was happening during the filming of Mr. and Mrs. Smith um, around 2004, 2005, stores were actually selling shirts that said like Team Jennifer or Team Angelina as if they were pitted against each other somehow, just fighting for the admiration of Brad Pitt, which is another really disgusting kind of sexist trope, that like, their only interest is fighting each other for a man. Yeah, Keisha, what was that Twitter poll you saw like a few oh, moments yeah. ago? Oh yeah, there was a Twitter poll that said, um, what, is and what is Jennifer Aniston feeling right now? And it was like, content, um, I, I deserve to be the only one, and it's just like, why would you even, why do you think she even cares about what's going on right now? Homegirl yeah. has her own life together, she's doing her thing, she doesn't, she doesn't need Brad Pitt. Yeah, I so wanted one of the options to just be like, severe apathy, that's probably what she's feeling, <laughs> because, like, think of what you were doing in 2004, and think of, like, if you're still mad about anything that happened to you then, like... That would make you... I was in fourth grade in 2004. That would be... There's a perspective, just saying. Really, really strange to hold on to things like that. And another thing that I think is really interesting about her is that, like, not only does she not hold on to this negativity and not hold on to the anger, but when people accuse her, she does have a breaking point. 
there was that uh, blog post that she did in the Huffington Post last July, and she came out and she had like a number of great quotes in it. She doesn't have social media, she very rarely does these public appearances, but when she does, um, she has a point that she wanted to make. And what she said in the Huffington Post was, I'm not pregnant, what I am is fed up. Another thing that people always say about Jennifer Aniston, if you've ever seen the cover of any tabloid ever, is that she's pregnant. She's pregnant now, she's pregnant in the future, she wants to be pregnant, but she can't be pregnant. Always, we're talking about Jennifer Aniston's womb, and it's really weird. Again, yeah. it's like we are trying to punish her. Yeah. It's like her womb is a Walmart, everyone's just welcome to come in. I mean, I mean in seriously. And out. <laughs> you, just, they, you just always see, they always paint her as this sad single person who just like can't find a man anymore, and she's so bitter and baby crazy, and nothing, based off of nothing she's actually done except maybe appear in rom-coms. And like the real irony there is that she actually said in 2010 while promoting her movie The Switch that women no longer need to settle with a man just to have that child, which prompted a little media storm with Bill O'Reilly from Fox News of all people. Our favorite who, person in the yeah. world. He jumped right in and he said that she is part of the degradation of society. What was it? She is destructive to our society because she's promoting this idea that a woman doesn't need to settle down with a man just to have a child. And she ended up clapping back and saying that while she definitely has nothing but respect for two parent households, you know, she stands by what she said. And so as long as she keeps coming out with these strong views on how you don't need to be married, you don't need to have a child, she's going to continue facing this really disgusting backlash in the press. Yeah, I think I don't, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why are we so obsessed with Jennifer Aniston's side. So like, even when back when there were just rumors that Brad Pitt and Angelina may have had um, some troubles, you know, I, I saw a headline in the magazine store that was like, Brad Pitt and Angelina are fighting. He's calling Jennifer Aniston. Like he has her on speed dial and she would actually pick up the phone on the first ring. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, something I'm also interested in is kind of the fact that this perception of Brad as a cheater is kind of carrying over to the news now. Again, because I saw a few headlines that were saying, maybe he's talking to Gwyneth Paltrow. And I'm just, Gwyneth or like, Paltrow? Maybe he's talking to Marion Cotillard. Yeah, it was a really ridiculous story. It was like saying that he whispered Gwyneth Paltrow's name in bed. And, then every, and I'm just like, how would you know that? But does this like need to always say like, oh, they can't have a divorce without, say, like another woman coming in and Home wrecking, and which then dragging my favorite word when it's <laughs> out <laughs> through the mud for no good reason. Yeah, like why is she even in this conversation? My question is, why are we sitting here treating Brad Pitt like a piece of gold that that um, Angelina and Jennifer have to kind of fight for? Like. I mean, have we looked into Brad Pitt's past? Because it's not We have, not actually. <laughs> Let's talk about another dating history that <laughs> doesn't get brought up nearly as much. Um, so yeah, um, okay, so Brad Pitt wasn't always Mr. Um, I'm dating Angelina Jolie. He has a little bit of a sordid past of Oh, I'm gonna say allegedly. I would say allegedly. Allegedly dating some underage girls, which if you think about the context of everyone talking about Angelina's personal life and her family issues and, and just Jennifer's personal life, no one ever talks about the things that Brad Pitt has done and the fact that allegedly he dated Shalene McCall, his Dallas co-star, when she was 15, back when he was 24, and that was back in the 80s. And after that, it was Christina Applegate when she was 17, allegedly, and Juliette Lewis, allegedly, they came public when she was 18. Um, but yeah, no one ever brings that up, and I think that's more problematic than Jennifer Aniston not wanting a kid. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. And it's really a mark of like where we are in our society, that we're still holding him up as the treasure that they should fight over, instead of saying like, here are a slew of women, not for nothing, Christina Applegate, Juliette Lewis, Jennifer Aniston. I mean, he has a habit of picking like very successful women to date, which I mean is a mark of him actually having some taste, which is interesting. But like these are all women who without him would still be exactly who they are and where they are. And I just, you can't get over the feeling that they are being punished for that. Yeah, and no one ever defines Brad Pitt really like Brad Pitt can exist and no one will really bring up his dating past unless it's 
something to do like this where there's divorce and possibly some kind of rumors cheating but like when he's promoting a movie it's usually Brad Pitt's starring in Fury or whatever project's coming mm -hmm. out whereas Jennifer Aniston they're always gonna have to ask the question are you talking to Brad what's up where are the kids um, are you happy you know yeah, yada 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 yeah. and on like another another note regarding like Angelina something I that really frustrates me is when people have to make divorce ugly because there are children involved. Like they have so mm -hmm. many children and the way I'm hearing things from her perspective, she just wants to make sure her kids are okay. And this idea that divorce has to mean failure versus like making a good decision for yourself and your children versus making like, like saying that something really changed in a decade and they're like different people. And like this divorce doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be an ugly thing with other women and cheating and like anger issues. But there's like this need to make it into that. And it might be ugly, but like you don't need other people making it uglier. No, not at all. And I think that's just embarrassing on the part of the press. It's embarrassing on the part of a lot of different people. Um, do we have any questions from anyone who is watching right now on the stream? Let's see if we have any questions. Meanwhile, one headline that I did really like that I showed you two a second ago, it was um, London School of Economics professor divorces Avatar. And I, and I just hope yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Like, let's have more headlines of like that, you know? Yeah, that was great. Um, some have, have we talked about some of our favorite, like, just doing research, some of our favorite headlines or worst headlines from just the Brad Pitt and Angelina, I mean, Jennifer Aniston divorce? Let's see. Did you, I was in fourth grade if <laughs> that wasn't. So I don't really remember too much about that. And that's almost sad that we have grown up with this idea of Angelina Jolie as like the sexy homewrecker and Jennifer Aniston as this poor woman who's been cheated on and will never ever recover. Like that is the narrative that we have been fed since we were in elementary school, which makes it all the more upsetting. Yeah, like evil, sexy, seductress yeah. comes in, steals your man. But I do remember like hearing a lot of rumors um, on old school, like gossip mm -hmm. blogs about how it was because she didn't want children or it was even because she didn't shave her legs enough I heard that one time and I remember reading it and as a as a middle schooler thereabouts like I really internalized that and I was like oh if I don't shave my legs like I will be dropped by my husband and so that's like a really irresponsible way to report on something yeah. as nuanced as grown up as a divorce yeah yeah especially when people are being cheated on like i was reading an article the other day about like all the jokes that were directed towards hillary clinton during that moment i couldn't help but see like a few sort of echoes of that it's just like oh you're not um you put a lot of blame and responsibility on like the wife or the girlfriend for not being able to satisfy her man or not being able to meet his needs yeah even donald trump like I think retweeted or made a joke about Hillary Clinton as uh, something maybe two years ago. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but he had retweeted someone that said Hillary Clinton couldn't satisfy her husband. Why would she satisfy America? And like holding women up as like their sexuality determines everything about their lives is really a disgusting trope in our modern culture. It's completely false, it's stupid. Also, we don't know the dynamics between Hillary and Bill, between uh, Jennifer and Brad. We don't know any of that. We're, all, we're speculating and the message that we're sending when we're speculating to young girls, to other media consumers, is that it's okay to make these jokes about women and their sexuality and to like make these flippant offhand comments. Um, the last thing that I really have to say on it is that this is just a really important exercise in looking at the media you consume and questioning why it's being presented to you in a certain way and I hope that as the headlines come out more about this divorce and God knows that Jennifer Aniston will continue being dragged into it for no good reason we really sit down and look at it and ask ourselves why the media is doing this what sort of agenda they are pushing and how far we are going to allow ourselves to buy into it. Yeah, and my goal is that Jennifer Aniston finally gets excluded from this narrative, so, to borrow words from John Legend, because honestly, it's been more than a decade. She has nothing, nothing to do with it. So those friends memes about her celebrating and, and, and what does Jennifer feel right now, that's, that's really, that doesn't matter because she's moved on. So why haven't we? 
think that's a good note to end things on. Well, it was really nice working with you guys. Yeah, yeah if you guys fun. have any more thoughts, hit us up in the comments. Go visit themarysue.com, mediaite.com, and let us know what you feel about it. Should we still be talking about Jennifer Aniston? Is it sexist? Why are we still interested in this? <laughs>